Do we have any immediate questions? Could you wait for the microphone, please? Uh, Stephen Leahy with the Interpress uh, News Service. I'd like um, a comment from you, because I've asked many uh, uh, scientists here whether or not the negotiators understand the science, and they all say, yeah, they do understand. They've all been briefed. So if they understand, what is it in your view uh, that enables them to act in a completely different manner? I'm afraid that it is vested financial interests. I think we cannot underestimate the power and the influence of particularly the fossil fuel industry. We know of their lobbying, certainly in Washington, both the coal and the oil industry, and, and, and they lobby with millions of dollars. We, we know that at one stage the tobacco industry were buying out doctors to say that smoking wasn't harmful for health. Now we have the fossil fuel industry lobbying that climate change isn't real and that it's not really damaging the planet. And they are holding us to ransom. And they are actually causing the destruction of the environment. And what we need to do is to stand up and say, we can live without this addiction to fossil fuels. Um, so uh, it's, it's both the fossil fuel industry, but it's also our whole present economic system that is taking us on this consumer uh, materialist paradigm. And we have got a shift from that. There are enough resources on this planet to feed everybody and to care for the environment if we only direct them correctly. At present, we have a, 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 an economic system that is self-centered that says, get as rich as you can, and excuse my using this word, to hell with the others. And we have got to recognize, and this is why Africa can be so important, that, that Ubuntu, which means recognizing that we're all part one of another. And, and, and not only humans, but we're all part of this planet. We, 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 we're integral with the planet. We are of the planet. And so stop letting economics dominate our lives, but let us put ecological sustainability and human well-being at the center. I just might add, in response, that within our Canadian statement, we do say that at its root, our unprecedented human contribution to climate change is symptomatic of a spiritual deficit. Excessive self-interest, destructive competition, and greed have given rise to an unsustainable pattern of production and consumption, unsustainable patterns. So, so it's a spiritual deficit that we must address. And in direct response to your question, I heard Professor Jesse Mugambi from Kenya yesterday speak of the difference between politics and statesmanship, as he put it. There is a difference between politics and leadership. We have seen an abundance of politics here at COP17. We have seen too little leadership. And so I think what's standing in the way, frankly, is courage in our political leaders to believe that people will follow when they give spiritually grounded moral leadership. I think lead, we've seen how this, we've seen how, how good leadership looks. We've seen it in Mahatma Gandhi. We've seen it in Desmond Tutu and others here, in Nelson Mandela. I mean, here we are in, in the home of great political leadership. And these leaders have, have had confidence that when they called us to do the right things, we would know that we were being called to do the right things and we would follow. And so I think what we're seeing is a lack of confidence in us. And I want to say to our political leaders, you can count on us to follow when you're prepared to give moral leadership. Speaking as a Buddhist, I'd like to add to that. And I would say that I think that we will, <clears throat> that one of the, I mean, I completely endorse what Bishop Jeff has said about the responsibility of the, of the major polluters and polluting corporations. And I think their actions, given their resources in the current context, and given the power that they would have 
to facilitate the shift to renewable energy if they put their hearts and minds to it is extraordinary. And the fact that they're failing to do that and continuing on the path that they are is tantamount to crimes against humanity and the planet. But there's, an, there's another dimension to this, which is that we live in an age where we think and, we, and these cops function in terms of, of numbers and statistics and abstractions. And the, the philosopher Gabriel Marcel's talked about the age of the spirit of abstraction, in which we cease to recognize the full humanity of other people and cease to recognize the full dignity of other forms of life. And so what we really need to do, what religion is about in a sense, is about relationship and about really renewing our sense of the, of the full integrity and value of other forms of life. And it's absolutely vital that we do that. And I think we need to see our political leaders showing us that they are sincere in what they are saying by demonstrating changes in their lifestyles. That's when we will be able to trust the leaders who are speaking to us about the need for change, when we actually see them starting to reduce their consumption, changing their patterns of consumption, reducing their carbon footprints. The leaders who do that will be the leaders who are starting to show the kinds of statesmanship that Margie has referred to. We have called for justice, and we want climate justice now, because uh, climate justice calls for justice both for the planet and for people. In South Africa, we had to overcome the injustice of apartheid. While we still had apartheid, the apartheid government was spending more and more on its so-called so defense to defend an immoral system. We find the same in the world today. Huge injustices between the North and the South. And, and what do we find? More and more so-called defense expenditure. There's a great argument as to what should be uh, how we can raise money for our green funds, our climate funds. Actually, let's put our priorities right. And we know from the Bible that we're called to seek justice. And, and yet the top six expenditure, uh, defense countries spend over $1 trillion on defense a year. And the United States alone, in 2009, spent $664 billion on so-called defense. And we can't raise $100 billion to save the planet. Likewise, we spent over a $1 trillion in 2009 to rescue the banking system. But we can't spend, we can't find the money to save the planet. And it shows that we have, at the center of our international life, we have money instead of well-being of people and planet. And so that's why we call for justice. And that is a, a, a biblical basis, and it's a, a, a principle of all religions. Are there other questions? Uh, thank, uh, thank you. Um, uh, I really don't have a question, but I just want